Do you have a specific goal for this season? Uh, to three-peat. What's at stake this coming year? There's a lot more to accomplish. You don't really have time to kind of sit back and say, look what we've done. It's just about staying in the moment. We're right in the thick of another run. Every season comes with different challenges. Free agency. So much uncertainty. Extension talk. That part of it is irrelevant to me. You got good days, you got bad days. And you got to just kind of roll with the punches. Cousins throws it down and stands over Kuzma. How many teams go to the finals four straight times in a row? You know, we do have three championships. They're all in the past. It's about approaching each year with that same goal and that same mentality. None of us are ready for this run to come to an end, so we got to continue to approach it like we got zero. Each season has its own story. And for the Warriors, it began with some fresh faces. The team drafted Jacob Evans with the 28th pick, signed free agent Jonas Jerebko, and ended the offseason with the unlikely signing of four-time NBA All-Star and big man, Demarcus Boogie Cousins. With the excitement surrounding the new season, the team got back to business, starting with Media Day. It's another Media Day, an official start to another season. I'm excited to get back to work, get the guys back together. This is year 10 for me, so I'm definitely gonna enjoy every minute of it. Uh, it's good to see all my teammates, all my coaches back in one place again. Uh, first time we all been together this year, and a lot of media, a lot of excitement, a lot of fun we've been having, so uh, I'm happy to be back. How do you kind of weigh the benefits of having younger players versus losing some of the, the veteran voices? Tough to quantify the impact that David West and Zaza and JaVale made. And we're gonna have a different dynamic this year. But we've got to take advantage of the youth, the energy. I think it'll be fun as a coach, it'll be fun for our fans to see, and hopefully by the end of the season we'll be clicking and, and ready to roll in the playoffs. The Warriors embraced the new faces and young talent, relying on Damian Jones to fill the question marks of the center position. The Golden State Warriors start here in Salt Lake City. And that's the way to play the lob. Damian was expecting the lob and knocked it away. And Durant taking it the distance. I love that play by Damian Jones. You see his quickness, his athleticism. Damian Jones. What a lob finish there. 6.1 to go. Jarebko played for the Jazz last year. Throws to Durant. AD at five and three. Durant for the lead. Ribbed it out. Jarebko tipped it in. Jarebko tipped it in. He got it at the horn. Jarebko came back. He tipped it in. Andre Godala came out of the locker room shirtless. What an incredible effort. And that effort continued three games later when the Dubs took on the Wizards. And Stephen Curry racked up an incredible 51 points in three quarters. The Warriors were on fire. We're in the United Center in the Chicago, Illinois, as the Golden State Warriors take on the Chicago Bulls. Plays made one. How about two? Play another three. Yes, sir. Look at who came out on the court. The entire roster. Play Thompson again. It's a quarter three, and yes, it is a swish. Right side, Clay takes a dribble. Team threes in the game. It's never been done. With starters Stephen Curry and Draymond Green sidelined with injuries, the Warriors looked to slow down the red-hot Raptors, who had the best record in the NBA 
at 18 and 4. Here comes Durant, two and a half to go. Accelerates around Siakam to the rack and he flies in for a two-hand slam. 40 points for Kevin Durant. 18 seconds to go. Toronto leading by three. Durant pulls up to the corner. Left corner needs help. Shoots over Leonard. Got it! He hit it! He hit it! It's a corner three and we are tied! But even with forcing an improbable overtime, the Warriors lost to the Raptors, 131 to 125. Up until that point, injuries had plagued the Warriors. By December, the team was 15 and eight, but as the season progressed, things took a turn. The Warriors are really talented, but I think when you're looking at those joyful moments, it's telling that that happened at the beginning of the season as opposed to later on. There was no doubt there was a lot of tension but the thing that the Warriors have always prided themselves on is having that team chemistry, having that joy. You have all this talent, but the key is that these guys are committed to each other. You know, they play hard for each other, and they want each other to have success. And that's, that's why it works, and it's been amazing to be along for the ride. The center position, and this is so interesting to me personally because you see the NBA going to small ball and how instrumental the Warriors have been in that with teams wanting to basically imitate them. And suddenly there's this conversation about big men now, like the center position is what's getting so many questions for the Warriors. And they have such a good collection of centers too. So there's there's competition, there's intrigue there, there's Damian Jones, there's Kevon Looney. Does Jordan Bell fit there? Does, does Draymond Green fit there? And then... DeMarcus Cousins, and everybody was waiting for his moment to see what he could bring. Stephen Wheeling, missing. The rebound to Drummond, and he just stayed with it. Yeah, that's tough news. Um, you know, torn pectoral muscle, so he's going to see a specialist, I think, on Tuesday. And um, this is a big setback for him and for us. We've been talking about how the bigs have been inconsistent, and man, they're really thin. I think Damian Jones and Kevon Looney both have different skill sets. They're both very talented. They both fill a role for the team. But then when Boogie comes along, you gotta go with Boogie. Boogie Cousins walks around in his sleep averaging 25 and 11 over the last four years. Averaged 28 and 12 before he got hurt last year. This dude is a big time offensive player. So you add Boogie to that team. What's the percentage that the Warriors become unbeatable? Your eyes, your eyes yes, just got yes, really yes. big. Yeah. It was really DeMarcus's idea to go to Santa Cruz. His brother plays down there, and we needed to get him out of this gym playing scrimmages against our coaching staff and our video room. And he went down a couple times to Santa Cruz to scrimmage with the team down there, and it was really helpful. I'm trying to find the floor of the game, get my body and my mind used to you know, playing with high-level competition. So it's just a matter of time. Hey, he should be in the dribble like he did a pity battle. What? That don't make no sense. I don't look at this as anything but an opportunity to get better and you know, prepare myself. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be in this situation. You know, I'm going to take full advantage of it and uh, I'm going to have fun with what I'm doing. It's been great having DeMarcus around. He's hilarious. He's got a great sense of humor. He talks a lot of trash. Give it up! Give it up! During games to the other players, even to our own players. Oh, that's right, oh, that's right, he's a guy who loves to be on the floor, he loves the game, and I think he's just so ready to compete again after being out for almost a year now with the Achilles injury. So I'm really happy for him that he's going to be back out there. It'll be a lot of emotions, honestly. I don't think anybody can ever really understand this, and I don't really expect them to, unless they've, you know, they've experienced themselves. So I'm excited to play with everybody. You know? I'm excited to be coached by the coaching staff. I'm excited to play in front of the fans. I'm, I'm just excited to play basketball again. Tonight's question is pretty simple. Are you ready to boogie? DeMarcus Cousins makes his Golden State debut. All I want to do is get back out there and play the game that I love to play. But the story tonight is boogie, ninth year in the NBA. Pick and roll with Cousins. Durant off that screen. Bounce pass Boogie. Look out. Right hand slam for Boogie Cousins. Welcome back. 
Bounce pass, Cousins running the floor, layup good. Oh, that was beautiful. I like a kid on Christmas. You know, it's been a long journey. Uh, this is probably one of the best days of my life, just being out there on the floor again, playing the game that I love. Warriors just haven't had a big man who can do this. They got a guy who can rebound in traffic, who can hit threes, who can post up, who can pass, who can run the floor. Cousins can score, and he can score bunches, and he can punish defenses. The Warriors look like Donalds, you know, they're like, they've got that last jewel, like, it looks like they're ready to just destroy everything, like. The team as a whole has shown that they still possess the best roster in the league. They have the top talent. It's what they want to do with that talent. It's, I see them struggling to play to their standards sometimes with the understanding that this is a long season. You know, the Warriors are obviously coming off a lot of success, another NBA championship. So the ultimate first world problem was how do they stay engaged for another long season and not the labor, the grind that goes into an 82 game schedule. In February, the Warriors won 11 straight road games, but their spark was diminished on the eve of All-Star break. Collins and Draymond making sure that he's got to go to the line. That's a flagrant foul on Draymond. And Steve Kerr is very upset. Steve Kerr just got teed up. Steve Kerr just got ejected. So an 11-game road winning streak goes by the boards here in Portland. It's time for the All-Star break. This segment is brought to you by PG&E, proud community partner of the Golden State Warriors. PlayWorks is the leading national nonprofit organization that's focused on leveraging the power of play to transform school culture and also to bring out the best in every student. Our schools tend to be low-income schools. They may not have the facilities to play. We are extremely fortunate to have the partnership that we have with the Warriors Community Foundation and also with PG&E. That partnership allows us to be able to spread our, our message and, and kind of continue this movement for play. And then we have this kind of resounding effect of community being built right in front of our eyes on the playground. As some players and coaches prepared for vacation and relaxation, Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, and Clay Thompson headed to Charlotte, North Carolina for the start of All-Star Weekend. It's awesome to be an All-Star. You know, All-Star stuff factors into the Hall of Fame. It can factor into your contracts. It can factor into the perception of who you are as a player. So we came in from San Jose, California. Huge Golden State Warrior fans. Huge Curry fan. I mean, I'm from Detroit, but gotta love Golden State, winning team, doing it right. I'm here to root for the Golden State Warriors. It's my first time ever attending an NBA All-Star game, so I'm not really excited. To have Clay Thompson, KD, and Steph here all together, three of the greatest players in basketball, it honestly is a dream come true. To kick off All-Star Weekend, NBA players participated in a day of service throughout the city of Charlotte. Charlotte's an amazing host city. Being back here for the NBA All-Star game is a great feeling, and we'll just show our face in the community and you know do whatever we can to help out is a huge blessing. You know, I think uh, it's our responsibility as athletes and people with a platform to and influence to give back and you know. And, uh, impact people as much as we can. The city that's given so much to me and my family and supported us, it's really nice to uh, be able to give back in, in this magnitude. And Steph Curry was basically the unofficial mayor because he grew up in, in Charlotte. So he had a lot of different visits that he made as far as dedicating some courts, visiting community centers. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome to be back here and re representing Charlotte the way I, the way I know how. In his hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina, Stephen Curry and his family left a lasting impact far beyond All-Star Weekend by renovating Stephen's old rec center and a staple in the Charlotte community, the Carol Hoffner Center. 
He's really everything. Um, he's something that we are, are super prideful of. Um, obviously, he's incredibly humble in what he does about that, so he doesn't bask in that at all. It's a cool thing to be able to point to someone and say, hey, he's one of ours. Um, he's, he's somebody that's out in the community doing incredible things. But the main event was on the court with a shooting contest between the Curry family, which mom participated in also. Her, her celebration game was, was nice. It was just exciting for the whole family to, to be there. Very fitting ending to, to the day and to, the, uh, to that event that she made that shot. As the weekend progressed, the Battle of the Curry Brothers was the talk of the town as Stefan and Seth warmed up for the three-point contest. All right, who's winning the three-point contest? Steph. Steph. Without a doubt? Yeah. Yeah. I'm most excited for the three-point contest. Steph's got this all day. I mean, I'm going for the little child, so I got money on Seth. Seth Curry. Being a Warrior fan that I am, I'm definitely rooting for Steph. Rooting for Curry. Um, if any one of them win, that would be awesome. Are you going to show a little bias? Are, are you leaning one way? I'm definitely leaning one way. He's already won one. He's got all the awards. Young fellow, trying to get the young fellow on the board. This is art right here you're watching. This is just beauty. I mean, just people sit back, watch, and enjoy. He can take the lead with all five. Look at this. He can take the lead. This ain't right. With all five in this first round, he will win. If he doesn't get four out of five, it's here. Okay, here's the most important round right here. Make five in a row to time. Here's the most important round, people. Oh. I think that. Oh, Joe Harris. Harris of the Brooklyn Nets has won. We can make a mislead, make a miss competition. It's a tough, uh, tough, tough way to end it, but. Joe shot the lights up. I don't think there's five of these. This was definitely my favorite, even though I didn't win, just because of the atmosphere and uh, my history of the city. With the city of Charlotte buzzing, it was time for Team Giannis versus Team LeBron. Up for three. Yes, in the face of James Harden. There's Thompson White open for three. Yes. Durant looking for three point range and knocks it down again. Here's Curry with a high bounce pass. On a quick release. Yeah. 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 So has Clay Thompson. With the cross court. Oh, Curry runs. Coming up on a minute remaining. In the fourth, Durant. Oh, he's on fire here in the fourth quarter. That's one for the city of Charlotte to cap it off. <laughs> Team LeBron coming from behind, and they beat Team Giannis 178 to 164. There can be only one All Star, and the 2019 Kia NBA All Star is Kevin Durant. Now the All-Star has happened. Okay, it's, it's the end of February, it's March, it's April. April means playoffs. Like, it feels like the top of a roller coaster, and now they're in the whoosh stage. It's coming, playoffs are coming. Great pass to Curry, who goes in for a dunk! 
Curry with a dunk. Durant three on the way. The Houston Rockets have come to Oracle without James Harden. They outplayed the Warriors all night long. Well, the Warriors will turn the page and get ready for Denver in a battle of the top two teams in the West. A beatdown tonight at the hands of Boston, 128 to 95. You can't have nights like tonight, though, where the team just pounces on you and embarrasses you in your home floor. It starts with effort. It starts with engagement, and uh, there's got to be a level of intensity. You got to be able to get out there and compete, and um, that's where it starts. Three years ago, two years ago, whatever it was, I didn't foresee this happening. But I'm excited as hell about it, so uh, it's good. Blocked by Bowman, Howard goes up, blocked by Bowman again! NBA big man Andrew Bogut has returned for his second stint with the team after signing a contract for the remainder of the season. Bogut is the insurance, but I do think there's a little bit more than that. I think it's, let's bring back a guy who knows us who knows what we do. The good thing about Andrew Bogut is he's very familiar with the Warrior system. He's very familiar with the players here. So I think that it's a matter of just plugging him in there and, and he'll be able to help them uh, tremendously. Everybody's all in. Everybody's got the same goal. Whatever we need to do each night to win, that's what we're gonna do. Never underestimate the heart of a champion. Like these, you just have another gear. The Warriors can only be defeated, in my mind, by the Warriors. You always know that you, you have this in the back of your mind, that you're capable of these things, but when do you bring all that talent to the forefront? When does it start to matter? I think once the playoffs start, I don't want to say they're going to flip the switch, but they might flip the switch. How do you put this stuff into action? How do you have the rehearsal games before the playoffs so you know you can play to this level? They're going to be going all out with their effort, their intensity. You're going to see their all-star talent at their best. Come playoff time, they know what's at stake.